So today we're going to go back and talk about a very exciting galaxy that was originally discovered back in 2015. Back then this was the farthest galaxy known to us. The galaxy GNZ11. And the Z11 here stands for the redshift. The redshift of this galaxy back then made it the farthest object we've ever seen. Existing approximately 13.4 billion years ago or approximately 400 million years after the Big Bang. And although since then James Webb Space Telescope discovered something that's even a little bit farther, even today GNZ11 is still one of the most exciting and most studied distant galaxies ever. And as you're going to learn in this video, there have been a few really exciting discoveries coming out of this galaxy, taking us a little bit closer to solving a few cosmological mysteries. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss this galaxy once again, talk about some of the more recent discoveries that came out out of two separate studies, and of course talk about why some of these discoveries are kind of important. But first, so exactly what is this? Well, based on some of the preliminary discoveries, we know that this galaxy is about 4% the size of the Milky Way and contains about 1% of the mass. So it's actually relatively small, technically a dwarf galaxy. But it's also ridiculously bright. It's forming stars at least 20 times as fast and is producing an enormous amount of light, making this an extremely luminous object visible from very far away. How far away? Well, if you consider the expansion of the universe, 32 billion light years away from us. Once again, redshift of almost 11. In comparison, here's what the record holder looks like, the one discovered by the James Webb. This is at a redshift of 13.2 and just a little bit farther away, 33.6 billion light years, and definitely does not look as impressive or as bright. Actually, at least one study we've discussed previously even suggested that maybe, just maybe, this is not a galaxy, but instead some kind of a dark star made out of primordial dark matter. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But a lot of recent studies actually focused on something a little bit more detailed. They used observations from the James Webb to study spectroscopy. Or in essence, how the light changes by passing through various gases inside the galaxy in order to reveal what sort of elements are inside, but also reconstruct the overall structure of gas in the galaxy, potentially discovering certain mysteries. Now because James Webb is so powerful, it's physically able to see a lot of chunks of gas at really far away distances, and it can even tell us what sort of gas this is. And one of the recent studies discovered that there is a really high concentration of super dense gas somewhere in the center. And specifically, a very thick, very dense gas that seems to contain a lot of ionized elements that are very likely created by something extremely powerful. With the first assumption, of course, being a supermassive black hole. But just seeing gas was not enough, so the researchers behind the recent study decided to find a few more clues. So first of all, in order to ionize elements, something really powerful has to happen in the vicinity. But turns out that these ionized elements were also moving really fast. Approximately 800 to 1000 kilometers per second compared to the rest of the galaxy, suggesting that something was spewing them out. The only way to explain this outflow velocity is once again with a massive black hole. Although here what we're observing are the galactic winds, basically all of this gas being thrown out of the galaxy by a very powerful active galactic nucleus or active black hole in the center that's transforming everything inside the galaxy through a lot of vigorous activity right in the middle. And so here by analyzing the speed of gas, the total mass of gas, and by looking at the density in the center, the researchers discovered a few more details about what it is. A black hole approximately 2 million solar masses in mass that seems to be accreting material five times the normal limit, what we refer to as the Addington limit. Which basically means that it's so ridiculously bright that the light produced by the black hole sort of pushes everything out of the system, even counteracting gravity. And because in this case, all of the spectroscopy or all of the colors seem to indicate that this is a black hole and nothing else, it actually means that we now officially have the farthest supermassive black hole ever seen. But since it's about 2 million solar masses, or approximately half the mass of the one in the Milky Way galaxy, it is a little bit surprising. I mean, since this galaxy is only 1% the mass of the Milky Way, but contains such a huge black hole, it's not entirely clear how all of this could have formed so quick. Here it's believed that the stars are only about 40 million years old, and so that means that all of this possibly formed really quickly. But James Webb might have actually solved one of these mysteries of ancient black holes 
in one of the recent studies that you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description. And so anyway, looks like we have the most distant active black hole ever seen. But this wasn't the only discovery coming from the galaxy and coming from that James Webb data. Here it was also able to analyze other gas clouds, specifically various clumps surrounding the galaxy, not really in the center. And intriguingly what they found was a huge concentration of helium gas. Actually a huge clump of helium that seems to surround GNZ11. And since there's only helium and hydrogen forming extremely dense clumps, this kind of corresponds to a really intriguing proposition from a few years ago. An idea that a lot of these helium clumps very likely eventually result in population 3 stars. The mysterious primordial first stars in the universe made entirely out of hydrogen and helium and nothing else. And one of the primary missions for the James Webb is to try to find evidence for these stars. Or even better, actually see them somewhere. But so far evidence has been kind of sparse. This though is the best evidence we have. These tiny concentrated pockets of helium, extremely close to a massive galaxy in the first billion years, is actually how the scientists expect population 3 stars formed through the process of direct collapse of all of these clouds into these really massive super hot objects. Objects that would be at least 500 solar masses in mass and possibly up to several thousand masses. With all of them burning with extreme heat and very likely just exploding completely once they become unstable. And so these are definitely not like any stars around us and will be something very extreme, extremely huge in size and producing massive explosions. But because their lifetime is expected to be really really short, possibly just a few thousand years or maybe even shorter, trying to capture that one frame where many of them existed has been so far really difficult. And so basically here we either find gas before these stars formed or in some cases find gas that seems to indicate supernova from these stars. Something we actually discussed in one of the recent videos about a potential discovery right here in the Milky Way. So yeah, there was a star found here that must have been created from a supernova from one of these stars. But trying to find evidence of the actual stars still existing so far has been very difficult. But since a lot of these very thick clouds of helium potentially existed for millions of years after the Big Bang, chances are there were several periods during which these unusual stars could have formed. And so one day we might actually find one of them as long as we keep looking. But what's actually exciting about this discovery of these helium clouds is that some of them are once again ionized. And ionized helium, specifically the one that's seen in this case, has always been believed to be a sign of population 3 stars illuminating the clouds around them. And intriguingly, if this is correct and if these are indeed clouds illuminated by these super powerful stars, then these stars must be super bright. The luminosity for a single star here is approximately 20 billion times higher than the sun. So yeah, let me repeat that again. 20 billion times more luminous than our sun. And that makes it a ridiculously bright object. And so unless there's another explanation for why these helium clouds are the way they are, Right now this seems to be the best evidence we have for the existence of primordial population 3 stars. Although technically there was another study from a few months ago that potentially found signs of these population 3 stars in a different location. This was from a stellar complex known as LAP1, which is an acronym for Lensed and Pristine. Pristine because it doesn't seem to contain anything except for very basic elements. But interestingly a lot of these elements are extremely ionized once again suggesting something super super powerful, very likely with a lot of UV light hiding somewhere in the middle. And so back then in 2023, the researchers believed that this is also the sign of population 3 stars that seem to be present in some kind of a growing galaxy. But the evidence was not as strong as the evidence from GNZ11. Right now what we're seeing from this distant galaxy is extremely difficult to argue with. There's basically no other explanation for this ionized helium except for very very powerful extremely massive stars somewhere in the center. And stars way way too bright to be anything but huge chunks of hydrogen and helium, hundreds of solar masses in mass. But we're probably not going to know more until future studies and until future observations. For now this is going to remain just a hypothesis. But at least the black hole in this galaxy has now been officially confirmed. Basically making this unusual galaxy one of the most exciting objects discovered in the last 10 years. But I'm sure we'll be discussing this galaxy again because even though it's no longer a record holder, due to its sheer size and its luminosity, 
it's one of the easiest objects to observe from these extreme distances. And so once the scientists learn something else, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.